God has put a seed of greatness within each of you, a seed of greatness, and we often we often forget about that, and we, we get overwhelmed with the situations and circumstances around our life, but what we ought to really consider is what God is saying about each of us, because he has Sherry said uh, amazing things. Amen. He has amazing things for you, and he has put a seed of greatness uh, within each of you, and that seed has a name. And, and so Hallelujah. we're, we're going to talk about names tonight because names are very important. You know, when the uh, angel Gabriel came to uh, the Virgin Mary, he said that God was going to plant a seed in her and uh, that seed was going to become the savior of the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, his name was to be called Jesus, which means savior. So, mm, uh, hallelujah. so that seed of greatness within you ha has a name and, and we need to uh, bring it forth. And, and uh, perhaps you haven't thought about this before, but there is a seed of greatness within each of you. And so when Jesus was a little boy and he was growing up and became a man, uh, when they would call him by name, he heard the name Savior. Yes, he always hallelujah. heard Savior. And so it's important that the name that God uh, gives us is important and it's going to line up with our purpose. We see it right there with Jesus. And uh, so sometimes God gives us names that align with our purpose and sometimes uh, other people put names upon us and uh, those don't align with our purpose, but uh, we need to uh, change them, let God change them so that our name aligns with our purpose. Uh, and we'll just start with a, a few examples. Uh, you know, Abram, Abram uh, in, in Genesis, um, of course, he's the father of our faith, and uh, so his name Abram meant exalted father, father, so uh, that was somewhat related to him, but it wasn't the fullness of his purpose, mm -hmm. and so in Genesis 17, 5, uh, the Lord appeared to him and said, I'll no longer call you Abram, which just simply meant father, but I'll call you Abraham, mm. uh, the father of a multitude of nations. So he changed his name so that his purpose and his name would fit together. And, and we all need that. We need to remember. See, when you when your name fits your purpose, then uh, that keeps your your focus on your purpose. Well, so when they when they call out your name, then then you remember, well, that's Amen. my purpose. That's my purpose. And when they called out Jesus, he knew that meant Savior, Savior. And so that keeps us focused uh, on the higher calling and not just the situations and the circumstances around us, but our purpose. See, there's nothing more fulfilling, more satisfying, greater, uh, more rewarding than fulfilling the purpose that God uh, put you on this earth Amen. for, Amen. because he knew you in eternity, and he he had a, a destiny for you, a purpose for you, and it's that purpose that is the greatest thing we can do is to fulfill that, and it'd be a terrible thing for any of us to live on this earth and not to fulfill our purpose. Uh, there's just so much potential in each of you uh, Sherry mm -hmm. and I want you to fulfill your purpose, but even more so, God wants you to fulfill his purpose right, right. because he had you in his heart in eternity before time began, and, and he had a purpose for you, and that purpose is now playing out and being revealed to you so you can do it. So this message tonight, I hope you will see that it's an encouraging message, uh, a message to keep your I own God and on the purpose that he has for you uh, on this earth and to let you know it's a great purpose. And so you have a seed of greatness. Let's look at another man <clears throat> whose name had to be changed and his name was Jacob. <clears throat> now, Jacob meant a supplanter, 
the one who was going to uh, take over from somebody else. He was also known as a deceiver. deceiver. Well, that he's going to become a, a patriarch uh, of uh, the na nation of Israel. And so God uh, didn't let him keep that name <laughs> of Jacob, the deceiver, uh, but he they wrestled all night. And so here comes an encounter with God. Amen. And so when Jacob Woo! wrestled all night with the Lord, uh, then the next morning, uh, he wanted to see the Lord's face. And, and the Lord said, no longer will I call you Jacob. No longer will I call you a deceiver, but I'll call you Israel because you have authority. You're a prince uh, having authority with God. Amen. Uh, and so his name see, is now related to his purpose. Deceiver was not his purpose. Uh, so it had to change, and God, God changed it. Well, uh, you know, that's not the only person whose name was changed. When we go into the New Testament, we see that Jesus drew Peter out of Simon. Mm -hmm. Now, Simon just simply meant one who was listening uh, to God, and, and uh, Jesus changed things when he said, now I'm going to call you Peter. Peter. The rock. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. because we're going to build things on you people. yes we're going to build it build on you so you'll you'll be strong enough that you can be a foundation for other people can mm -hmm. come along and build uh, and so we've got to have a different name for you uh <laughs> glory to god so he brought peter out of simon well let's think about another person in the new testament and uh, we know him as Saul, and he persecuted mm -hmm. the church and persecuted the Christians. And not only that, but Jesus said he persecuted him. That's so right. Why, why are you persecuting me? Uh, and you'd think, well, how did how did Saul persecute Peter? Well, when he did it to one, how did you uh, persecute least, Jesus? How did you persecute Jesus? Well, when you persecuted one of his least, yeah, uh, then yeah. you persecuted him. What you're doing to one of Jesus is uh, disciples that, that's doing it to him so if you're giving them water you're giving water to jesus mm -hmm. if you're giving them food you're giving, giving food, food to, to jesus. jesus if you're persecuting a christian you're persecuting uh jesus if you're judging uh bringing judgment on a on a christian you're persecuting bringing judgment on jesus and so there that's definitely something we need to be aware of uh what are how we behave towards our brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to lift them up. And that's what this message tonight is. It's a it's an encouraging message to let you know you're not destined just for mundane things. Mm -hmm. And you're not uh, under the uh, affairs of this life. But God is calling you to a higher level. He's calling you to a higher level tonight. And he wants you to know that he has placed within you a seed of greatness. And so well, here goes uh, Saul on his way to Damascus mm -hmm. on his the donkey, and he's persecuting people, but he encounters Jesus along the way Hallelujah. to Damascus. And after yeah, that, kicked off his donkey. And, and after that, he recognized who Jesus was. He said, Lord, uh, oh, Lord, he oh, called him Lord. Uh, he didn't know who he was until this, until you have an encounter uh, with Jesus. And uh, later, and uh, that was, of course, Acts chapter 9, and then Acts uh, 13, his name was changed from Saul to Paul. And I want to talk about that. Uh, we don't actually see Jesus saying, your name is going to be Paul. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, how it came about. We know that he had an encounter with Jesus and his name was changed. Now, the practical thing of his name being changed, uh, Saul was a regal name in the Hebrew uh, language. And so he was uh, uh, very high up. Uh, uh, he said he's a Benjaminite of the Benjaminites and the Pharisee of, uh, Pharisee of the Pharisees, and so he was in the Hebrew, uh, but he was sent, see, he was sent to the Gentiles, 
And so he, his name was changed then, not from that regal Hebrew name, but to a Roman name, Paul, and Paul meant small or little. And so Paul then could present Christ. And mm. so he didn't get in the way of his presentation mm. of Christ. Uh, he, he became small and little to present the precious seed within mm. him, which was Christ within him, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. And, and I believe that God has something in store for each of you. I, I, I see I see you, I see your heart, that, that God has is dealing with your heart and, and that he has something for you to do on this earth. And it's important to, to discover that. And like I say, uh, name it, I identify what is the name of this seed within man and why is it great? Well, I want to tell you why it is great uh, because Jesus said uh, John uh, the Baptist uh, came and John was greater than any of the Old Testament prophets. He was greater. But then he said in Matthew 11 and 11 that the least mm -hmm. in the kingdom, kingdom is greater than him. So if you are in the kingdom of God, even if you're the least, and I'm not saying you're the least, but as long as you made it into the kingdom, and how do you make it into the kingdom? Of course, that's by being born of water and of the spirit. Uh, and so, mm. so you've got to be born uh, by the Holy Spirit, born again, then you can enter the kingdom. You must be born again and to uh, enter the kingdom. Now see, John the Baptist didn't enter the kingdom because the kingdom really didn't come until Jesus uh, mm. said it came, uh, until Jesus came. Now when he cast out demons, uh, he, he had been uh, preaching that the kingdom is at hand, it's within reach. You can get it. You can get a hold of it. You can operate in the kingdom. Uh, it's at hand. Uh, and he said it came when he demonstrated the kingdom by casting out a demon. I'm talking about Matthew chapter 12. Mm -hmm. So when, when the power of God is on the earth operating and it was operating through him, uh, so when that power is operating, that is the kingdom. The kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy, joy in, the Holy in, Ghost. in the Holy Ghost. And that's the power of the Holy Ghost. So it's the supernatural realm. So the supernatural realm is here. <clears throat> it came without observation. <clears throat> we can't see it, but it's here. And you know it's here because the power is here, the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and so what, is, what does it mean then, this... Uh, to be great in the kingdom. He said, you're greater than the, the least in the kingdom is greater than all of those old time prophets, Old Testament prophets. Well, what's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament? The Old Testament was an, an era or a time of visitation. So the Holy Spirit would come upon people, anoint them, for a task, and they would do that task. But we live in a higher realm, and it's a realm not of visitation, but habitation. Because, because the Holy Spirit has come. The Holy Spirit has been shed abroad. Uh, he, uh, he's here, and he comes. When he comes, he puts love in our hearts. Glory mm -hmm. to God. So we're in the realm and the time and the uh, era of the habitation of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus said, I have to go away. If I don't go away, it's going to be expedient. It's going to be to your advantage that I go away, Jesus said. I'm talking about John 14, 7. He said, it's a, your advantage that I go away. Uh, and, and why is that? Because he wanted to, the Father to send the Holy Spirit to you. Mm, the comforter. So, so the comforter, see, he comes within you and he brings the kingdom with him. And, and you're and you have Jesus within you. And that's he's very precious, but he's a seed. He's the seed form. And, and we need to name what, what the seed is within us, the seed of greatness, and then develop it over time and let it come forth. Um, you know, Abraham had to. Uh, had to become that father of a multitude uh, mm -hmm. of nations. Jacob had to become 
that Israel. And, and so there, there were those changes and Peter had to, uh, Simon had to uh, become Peter and Saul had to become Paul. Uh, mm. and, and in order to release the greatness with to release the greatness and see even Abraham and it and uh, uh, Israel uh, they had to release the seed within them so that Christ could come forth Simon had to release Christ had to bring Christ forth uh, see if uh, Christ had uh, died on the cross and gone away and nobody ever talked about him nobody ever shared then we wouldn't know that Christ had been uh, crucified and was risen but because we've had people to proclaim the gospel year after year after year, the gospel has been proclaimed and they brought forth that seed of greatness within them by proclaiming uh, who's within them. And it's Jesus Christ within us, mm -hmm. the hope of, of glory. glory. And Paul had to humble himself so that he could preach the Christ uh, to the Gentiles. Now, who is great in the kingdom? Well, mm -hmm. Matthew 18, 1, uh, the disciples, and this is interesting, the disciples, um, some of them were fishermen, they, they came from a very common background. That, I mean, not common to uh, that they were all the same, but uh, none of them were aristocrats. Uh, none of them had a great wealth. Uh, but but just uh, normal everyday kinds of careers is all they had uh, hopes of having. Uh, some of them were fishermen, so one a tax collector, and and different things. They were just normal kinds of uh, occupations. Normal working people. Working people. But when Jesus, when they got close to Jesus, they began to think about greatness. And in uh, Matthew chapter uh, 18, they, they asked Jesus, who is the greatest in the kingdom? Now, don't you think that's a funny question to ask? Here Matthew they are. Matthew 18 or Matthew 17? Matthew 18. Okay. Matthew 18, verse 1. Who's the greatest in the kingdom? <laughs> and why would fishermen want to know about greatness? And why would a tax collector want to know about greatness? And uh, these people who were just a working class, why did they want to know about greatness? Because they had been with Jesus. And when you're with Jesus, it changes your sight and your vision mm -hmm. so that you have a vision for higher things. And, and so now, even though these were just working class people, and when they were born and when they were growing up, they never thought about greatness, but when they got around Jesus, all of a sudden they began to think about mm. greatness, and they said, who is the greatest in the kingdom? Now, in verse 4 of uh, Matthew 18, uh, Jesus takes a little a child, and, and, and he perhaps sets him up on his lap, and he says, hey, the kingdom's like this little child. You have to become like this little child uh, in order to enter the kingdom. Because he said, uh, greatest, uh, a little child is the greatest. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to know who's the greatest. Now he's saying uh, the little child is greatest. And then he says, uh, he who humbles himself. Yes, I mean. <laughs> oh, glory. You want to be in the kingdom, you need to humble yourself. If, you, if, you want, if you're if you interested in greatness, you have to humble yourself. See, uh, being arrogant, being proud proud and prideful, all of those terms that lifts you up. But remember, Saul was lifted up to begin with, and he had to become small and little. Mm -hmm. And then his, his name was Paul. So he he identified his outer person, small and little, because he wanted to release the greatness, the seed of greatness within him, which was Christ, the hope of glory. He's the one that told us about mm -hmm. Christ within mm -hmm. us is the hope of glory. Amen. Amen. And so what Jesus told his disciples when they started thinking about greatness, he said, well, you need to humble yourself because the greatest, those that are humble, they're the great ones. Yes, It's not the people who are big-headed, <laughs> uh, high-minded, uh, 
uh, all, all of these uh, intellectual thoughts, it's not those people who are, who are prideful. Uh, no, it's those who humble themselves. They're the greatest. See, the kingdom is, uh, things are upside down. We, we think in the world, uh, it's going to be one way, but mm -hmm. in the kingdom, mm -hmm. we have to remember what God is saying. Because God tells us what the kingdom is like. And in the kingdom, the greatest of the, are those people who humble themselves. But now that's not the only place he talked about. He also talked about uh, Matthew 23, 11. He said uh, that the greatest will be your servant. Hallelujah. The servant of all. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. So uh, I'm saying that you have a seed of greatness within you. And how do we? How do we bring it forth? Well, there's two points. One is you have to humble yourself and stay humble. See, uh, humbling yourself is not a one-time deal. Mm. It, it's a process. It's a day-by-day -day, uh, mm. life experience, a, a mm. way of living, of uh, being humble, being humble. And, and what is being humble? It, it's seeing yourself who God says you are and seeing God who he says he is, Woo, seeing hallelujah. God as he is, seeing yourself as you are. It is not, it is not saying, oh, woe is me and I'm a worm. It, it's not like that because that's natural thinking. It, it's about me seeing myself who God sees me as God sees me. That humbles myself. Okay, so if if he says I can lay hands on the sick and see them recovery, well, that's what he says about me, and that's what he says about you. You see yourself the way God sees you. You begin to talk, and you begin to think like God, and you talk like God, and you act like God. That is humility. That is true humility. Oh, that's good. That's Calling good yourself a worm and just a uh, putting yourself down and saying you're you're just a, a lowly worm and you have uh, nothing and you're going to amount to nothing. That's not who God says you are. God says there's a seed of greatness in you. Oh, and where did this yeah. seed come from? Well, of course, it's Jesus. It's Jesus <laughs> in you. Amen. And, and so we need to let him out. See yourself the way God sees you and see God as he really is, that's a humble spirit. Uh, so I want you to make a, a, the distinction there between people who are truly humble and those who just put on a, an appearance oh, yeah. and airs of being humble, mm -hmm. but in reality, they are uh, heady and high-minded uh, and, and because they're, they're thinking- They have their own thinking. It's their own thinking. And, and see, what's going to cause us to be humble is to think like God. And, and so uh, there's three uh, things that I think that are important in order for us. Oh, okay. I had a word for Sarah, but okay. she just left. Okay. okay. Uh, I think there's three things that are important uh, for us to, to release this seed of greatness within us. Well, first of all, I have to say that the seed of greatness is in your spirit, man. It's in your spirit, mm, man. Oh, that's where it lives. And, and, and because, see, when, when Jesus came in, you accepted Jesus, he came in, he brought <coughs> the Father and the Holy Spirit and the kingdom of God. They're all within you, but they're not up here in your mind or in your intellect or in your will and emotions. No, they're in your spirit, man. And so... The first thing I think that's important is to release your spirit man. Your spirit man has a voice. Oh, hallelujah. And you release mm. the voice of the spirit man, then that's going to release the spirit man because that's where, oh, the, that's where the greatness is. is. It's in your spirit man. And you know, uh, Jude uh, verse 20 talks about this, that you build yourself up on your most, most holy, holy faith. faith praying in the Holy, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we pray in tongues. That gives a voice because 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, when I pray in tongues, my spirit prays. So when you pray in tongues, your spirit prays. So you're giving a voice to your spirit man 
and releasing your spirit oh, man because that's where greatness is. It's in your spirit man. It's not up here in your intellect. It's not in your strength. It's not in how fast you are, how strong you are, how smart you are. Uh, no, it's in your spirit, man. That's where the greatness is. It's in your spirit, man. Mm -hmm. And so to release your greatness, you'll have to uh, pray in tongues because that Amen. gives a voice Amen. to your spirit, man. Second, that's the first thing. Give a voice to your spirit, man. Second is renew your mind. You know, Paul said, I, I, I beg you, I beseech you mm -hmm. uh, to present your body as a living sacrifice so that you'll uh, know the will of God and renew your mind. See, we've got to renew our mind to the word of God. And the way we renew our mind is by sacrificing our uh, outer man, our body, because our body is going to, our <coughs> body controls contains, your body contains our spirit and our soul. And so when we put everything in our life on the altar of God, then we're sacrificing um, and we're yielding to him, then we can renew our mind. See, we can't be in control of everything and renew our mind. We have to yield to the Lord and then by the spirit of God, he will renew our mind. And so this is a part of releasing the greatness within you is renewing your mind so that you think like God and speak like God and act like God. We are to be imitators of God. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm not out of the book. I'm right there in the book. It says, be imitators of God as dear children. Well, how are we going to imitate God if we don't think like him, if we don't speak like him, if we don't, we don't act, act like, like him. him? So that's that's the key. Uh, sacrifice. Put your body on the altar. That's your spirit, your soul, your body, all of it. Put it on the altar. Yield uh, to God, and then you can have your mind renewed. Stay there in the word. Let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. Yeah, I have something here. Right here. Sherry has something she wants I, to say. I believe that the spirit of the Lord just uh, uh, said to me that there are some people that do not like to uh, relinquish control. And, and so because they do not like to lose control, control of who they are, control of uh, what's being done around them, control of their environment, uh, control of their body, control of their mind. And because they are resistant uh, to relinquishing control, it's harder for them uh, to release the spirit man because the spirit man, uh, when he's released, then that's when you act like God and think like God and speak like God. And to the natural man, that can sometimes seem very strange. Well, I'm doing strange things here. You know, I'm doing uh, things that I've never done before. I'm, I'm speaking out things that, that I don't know where it's coming from. Well, when that spirit man is released, then, then the power of God is there. The, the, the nature of God is there. And, but there are some, some who do not want to relinquish that control. And so in the name of Jesus, I pray over all of us, every one of us yeah. in this Zoom meeting right now, in the name of Jesus, that we will relinquish control of our spirit, our soul, our mind, our bodies to the Holy Spirit, that we will give everything to him. We will release uh, any control uh, over our, ourselves that we might become uh, that the, the vessel of greatness uh, that Brother Fred is talking about. Okay, so uh, there are three points I want to make on how we can release this greatness, and the first one uh, that I that I talked about was giving the voice to your spirit. Mm. The second one now is renewing your mind, and mm. the third one is to love like Christ loves us uh, because 
He said, no man has greater love than this. Great. You hear the word great in there? No man has greater love than this. They lay down his life uh, for his friends. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Jesus laid down his life for his friends. And, and he said, we are to love like he loved us. How did he love us? He gave his life for us. And so there's the greatness. It's love. Love mm -hmm. is the greatness. Where, where does the love come from? It comes from the Holy Spirit. Romans mm -hmm. 5, 5 says that uh, been shed, been shed abroad. abroad the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit and so those are the three points I think that are real important uh, is that we have to give a voice to the to our spirit man see if we're not giving a voice to our spirit man if we never uh, pray in tongues uh, then we keep things bound up and, and you've got to have some releasing uh, in order to release this greatness Okay, so I've talked about those three things, but now the final thing I want to talk about, and I said names are very important, and that God changed names, mm -hmm. and you know when he changed Abram's name, which meant father, to uh, father of many nations, Romans 4, 17 made a direct reference to that, and he said uh, he, he called him a father of many nations because he was calling things that be not as though so they, they were. were. Ooh, so be, he's yeah. calling things into existence. And so this is the reason I'm talking about name, names and naming that seed and trying to make bring it down to a very practical uh, point of view so that you can recognize there is greatness within you. Uh, and well, it's one thing uh, to say, well, when is this greatness going to come forth? Uh, is it going to come forth uh, when we get to heaven? No, no, it's not. It, it doesn't come forth when you get up there. Uh, and I can show you this in Revelation 2.17. Uh, 2 it says that if you overcome, you are given a new name. Woo, glory. You're given a new name. Now, that, we need to name that greatness, that seed of greatness within us. Because when you name it, then you'll develop it and release it uh, so that your greatness can come forth in this life. Because he said you overcome. If you overcome, then you get a new name. And so we need to name that greatness within each of you. And the way I want to start it is this way, that uh, your parents gave you a name. And do you know what that name means? And if it might be a clue to what your uh, purpose is on the earth, or it might not be. Mm -hmm. But that's a good place to start. What does your name mean? Uh, and does it mean uh, something related to God's power and his uh, majesty and, and bringing forth those things? If uh, any of you have a name like that, that you'd like to share with us, well, let's Let's uh, think about that. And so I'll, I'll give you an opportunity in a moment to think about what your parents named you. What is your name? Or in some cases, uh, you've uh, even selected a new name. Uh, uh, I know uh, uh, one one uh, calls herself Joy, uh, though that's probably not the name that uh, she was given by her parents, but it might be related or it might not. Well, it's a poor, it's, it's, certainly related to her purpose yes because right. because you're you're an encourager uh and you bring joy to others and you and you carry that joy and so this is this is part of your purpose there are so many uh, that need hope that that need encouragement that need to just uh sense uh, a joy in their life and uh, because all they've seen is is bad stuff or all they've seen is is uh, negative things uh but you carry uh that that positive power uh of joy uh within you and so if you pick that name for yourself uh then it's definitely related to your purpose okay. and, and um, but but some of you your your parents gave you a name that's a very strong name uh, and, and it might be in a different language than English, and that, that's okay. What 
uh, and that might might help you identify that seed of greatness within you. Uh, and, and let's just look at Sherry for a moment. Think about her. You know, uh, it, it's the roots of Sherry go back to Sharon and, and the rose, love. The rose of Sharon. Uh, okay. And so it's a related to love. And so you could certainly look at Sherry and say, uh, she's got a lot of love. Uh, I know she does. Uh, I, I think uh, she's the most loving person that I know of. As love, but you know, even though uh, her name relates to love, uh, God changed her name, and I want you to mm -hmm. tell us about that. When God changed your name, well, Jerry, I may have shared this uh, testimony with you that I was downtown Athens, Georgia, and getting out of my car, and I heard the voice of the Lord say, "I'm changing your name," and I said, "Okay," and I said, "To what?" and He said, "From." from this day forward, and that was over 25 years ago, uh, from this day forward, your name, I will call you Israel, because you will have power with me, and so that is part of my destiny, it's part of my purpose, is to um, let others see the manifestation of his power, and for that power to bring healing, and deliverance, and salvation uh to others uh in the in this world and and i believe that 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 love works with it because uh faith worketh by love and i believe that the power of god is his love in action and so i believe that they both fit together uh so it wasn't that it was that my name sherry was just thrown out the window uh, but I believe that he he fulfilled. Okay. He added to okay. and fulfilled uh, what my purpose on this earth is all about. And I believe that that's another reason uh, that I received the healing from cancer, the miracle, actually. Uh, and and also with my heart uh, that I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. Um, uh, about two weeks after I returned from Cuba and, and the Lord, uh, my, my pump, the pump pumping of my heart was down to 20%. My daughter, who is a registered nurse, I uh, got very upset about it because at 15%, they put people in hospice and, uh, and, and mine was at 20% and driving down Millage Avenue in Athens, Georgia, uh, one, uh, it was at lunchtime, and I was taking Brother Fred back to work at the university, and all of a sudden, the, the scripture and the song uh, came up in my spirit, God is the strength of my heart, God is the strength of my heart, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And I just sang it over and over and over. And I looked over at Brother Fred and I said, the Lord's just healed my heart. Hallelujah. Because he's my portion forever. And he's, he's given strength to my heart. And so I immediately called the doctor and wanted another um, echo uh, done on my heart. And he says, no, it's not time. Uh, the medication has not had time to, to work on your heart. And you need to do this and you need to do that. And I said, no. I want another echo done, schedule it. And so he did. And just a few days later, I found out that the beating had gone back to normal and the pumping had gone back to normal because God had healed my heart. And so I believe that 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 love and that power uh, that he's given um, to, to me uh, is to fulfill my purpose and my destiny here on this earth. Before I turn the, the floor over, or turn it back over to Brother Fred. And Joy, you might want to write this down. I'm recording. I'm recording. Is You're it recording. Sarah? Okay. Uh, because you've given two wonderful names to your, your two beautiful daughters. I don't know if both of you chose those names, but they were excellent names. One is Sarah and one is Grace. <clears throat> and I'm going to start with Sarah first. And that is what I saw uh, in her was the, the seed of greatness was her ability to bring people to the Lord. She is the mother of nations. 
And that's what Sarah means. And, and so her greatness, uh, her name is definitely connected with her purpose, that she has the gifting, she has the, the uh, ability, the spiritual ability uh, to, uh, to bring people to the Lord. And, and so this is, uh, this is a, a wonderful thing, a wonderful thing. And with grace, and I've said this over and over again, grace, um, her, her purpose is to show forth the compassion of the Lord and to bring people to, into healing and to bring people into deliverance. And only by the grace of God can we do that. And so her name is definitely connected uh, with her purpose and with her destiny. So if you'll share that with your two daughters, uh, that that is. Thank you, know, you thank you very much. And thank you Thanks for the encouraging words. And um, my Chinese name actually means joy, joy. So it connect with my. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, definitely. You, your parents uh, see. Some of, some of our parents gave us a God-given name uh, without really realizing it was from God, yeah. um, but, but it was. And in your case, that, that's definitely uh, reflects that it's God-given, uh, even though it may have come through your parents. Uh, my name uh, means royal warrior. And uh, so... I am a prayer warrior for the Lord. And so uh, I'm not called in to pray for every situation and every uh, evil thing that happens to everybody around, but I, I am a prayer warrior for the Lord. And I have to be sensitive to what he says. And uh, so I have to uh, pray as he gives me direction to pray. And that's what's going to be effective. I, I could pray for a lot of things, but mm -hmm. what's going to be effective in my life if I follow the Lord and, and I fight the battles, the spiritual battles that he has intended for me uh, to fight. Now, I, I've covered a lot of ground tonight, and I just want to get down to this point that you need to know what your seed of greatness is. A and uh, see, from, from Revelation 2, 17, mm -hmm. it says to those who overcome, he gives a new name. Hallelujah. Uh, and, and so he called, uh, see, Peter out of Simon. He called Paul out of Saul. And he wants to call you out of uh, your situation. And he wants to bring you forth into that, into greatness. And you need to know. You need to know. And so this is not about when you get to heaven. Uh, you overcome things down here. You, what do you overcome up there? There's nothing to overcome up there in heaven. That's heaven. The, the things to overcome are down here. Mm -hmm. And that's when you get the new name. And that brings uh, that you're able to focus on what your purpose is and let that name be out there directing you to what your purpose is on this earth. Amen. And mm -hmm. so... Let's think about it. How do we name the seed of greatness within each of us? And, uh, it, and it may be a name that only you know. See, that's what Revelation to you know. But sometimes a prophet might say something to you or the Holy Spirit might say something to you. But you need to, you need to take ownership of that seed of greatness that was in you. You can easily live this life and never develop that seed of greatness, and it'll never come forth. You've got to be proactive. You've got to take the initiative and bring forth the seed of greatness that's within you. Uh, Jesus said we all have it. If you're in the kingdom, you've got the seed of greatness, and of course, it's Jesus. You're carrying mm -hmm. Jesus, and it's going to bring come forth, but it's going to come forth in a different dimension, in a different aspect in each of our lives we're not all alike we're all unique we're all special and you need to identify who that is and what give a name to it and pray and if you don't know now and you say well the name that my parents gave me are obviously uh, not uh, god given uh, they may have called me a deceiver you know there was a man named jabez, jabez. his mother called him pain, pain. And he said, and he, he had a prayer 
that's still going forth today says, I don't want to cause pain. Glory to God, but increase my borders. And so mm -hmm. uh, pray the prayer of Jabez. But his mother called him pain. And that was not his destiny. His destiny was to expand his borders and not to uh, bring pain on people. And so I'm saying that each of you need to identify what that seed of greatness within you. Don't let it fall to the earth uh, without producing fruit. It needs to be developed. It needs to be brought forth. You're here on this earth for a purpose, a divine purpose. Let spend time with the Holy Spirit and name name the seed of greatness within you. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Thank amen, you. amen.